Well, hi everyone. There certainly has been a lot of dam and flooding stories in the news lately. A number of you have called my attention to the Lake Livingston Dam project about 70 miles north of Houston, Texas. And uh, I did my own research and contacted the authorities directly and it's quite the strange saga in my view. So in this video, I'm going to tell you about what we know, what's going on with the dam, and what repairs are currently underway. This comes about a week after the Trinity River Authority officials warned of a potential dam collapse, which was quite alarming. Now to give you an overview, this Trinity River Authority dam, Lake Livingston, serves as a water supply reservoir to the city of Houston. There's also electrical power generated here through a hydro station. Because of that hydropower generation, projects under the jurisdiction of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, and we'll come back to them in a second. Now this reservoir has a surface area of 83,000 acres and impounds more than 1.7 million acre feet of water at its normal pool elevation of 131 feet. They're currently lowering that reservoir elevation to 128 feet to affect these emergency repairs. So this dam provides no flood control benefit. So pretty much the water that comes in has to come out pretty quickly. And record outflows occurred on May 2nd, 2024 at 124,000 cubic feet per second. And a subsequent inspection about two weeks later in a filing to FERC indicated that there was extensive damage to the spillway wall, what they call the training wall. And then a subsequent inspection in June indicated that the spillway apron, the concrete slab on the downstream side of the spillway gates had been undermined through erosion and scour. So essentially all of the riprap at the base of this apron, which forms what they call a stilling basin, the riprap got eroded away, transported farther downstream and then the head cutting underneath the slab undermined vast portions of the spillway apron. And of course, a large concrete slab like that isn't designed to support its own weight over a large area. So the potential concern would be that the spillway slab starts to break up and then you lose potentially the spillway gate, loss of dam section, and just uncontrolled release of the water. Now, I mentioned earlier, this was kind of an odd saga so local news media started reporting this announcement of a potential dam failure about a week ago. I'm recording this on July 5th, 2024. And so for about a week, all the news media said was there's some damage going on. They're going to repair it. It's from all this flow that occurred earlier in the year from March through May and, and no details whatsoever. So I contacted the Trinity River Authority myself on July 3rd and uh, made, made me want to pull my hair out. I mean, they just kept reading from a prepared statement saying exactly what the news media has been saying, which is where I imagine they got that information. And I kept drilling down, well, what's the nature of the damage? What specifically are they doing for repairs? No information whatsoever. So here we are on July 5th, and starting yesterday, July 4th, a lot more details have emerged from local media and the Trinity River Authority, apparently. Now, there's some great articles. A lot of this reporting is coming from New Station 2 in Houston. They have a website, Click to Houston. And in this article, it provides an overview of the repairs that are being done. It also includes links of response letters from Federal Energy Regulatory Commission to the people responsible for operating this dam. And so you can see here from May 20th, they're referencing inspections done on May 10th, 2024, by Simpson, Gumperts, and Hager. And if that name sounds familiar, it's because of Millennium Tower fame. I've done a number of videos about Millennium Tower. An uh, engineer named Ron Hamburger is the principal engineer involved with designing what they call the remediation or the repair for the Millennium Tower to arrest its tilt and settlement. And I've had a number of critiques about how that's gone, if you want to check those videos out. So in this filing, they indicate the damage that was done to the spillway wall, the training wall. And then subsequent to that, from a June inspection, they further talk about undermining, basically removal of the riprap from erosion and then scour 
which is undermine large areas of the spillway slab. So what they're doing now is they're putting new riprap into the stilling basin, and they're in the process of coring the spillway slab to provide injection holes for grout underneath the slab. Now, just days after this announcement by Trinity River Authority of a potential dam failure, you have people out there fishing immediately downstream, boating downstream. So it was, it was weird. It's like, oh, the dam could fail, but business as usual and, and no details are, are gonna be provided. I mean, I, I don't get that. So they anticipate that these repairs would take a couple of weeks to implement. Uh, that's probably being pretty optimistic it takes a long time to assess all the areas that need to be treated. And then typically after you do a grouting program like this, you go back and do additional coring or perhaps even geophysics to see if there's any other void areas that were missed. So there could be several sequences or several phases of this grouting over time. Now we'll see if these repair efforts are hindered by additional thunderstorms that are gonna be rolling through the area here over the next week plus. Now I want to mention this other article. This article was brought to my attention by a channel member, so thank you very much for that. And the article's uh, satellite company spots significant deformation at Lake Livingston Dam. So if you go through this article, they talk about settlement of the spillway, but they also talk about other areas of distress, and they didn't really provide a lot of details. But if you look at these highlighted areas, obviously you see the spillway location here, but they also note areas of movement which would correspond to the earthen embankment for the dam. And in these two recent documents that I referenced from FERC to the dam operator, there's no mention of any embankment distress. So that's rather interesting that it would show up in this one article. And by the way, all of these articles, I'll provide a link in the description to this video so you can check it out for yourself. Also, I'll be doing updates on the Rapid Ed Dam failure in Minnesota. That situation is another example of a dam failure. In this case, high water levels due to problems with the spillway being clogged with trees and other debris resulted in overflow at the west abutment of the dam. And there was significant erosion and scour that widened the channel well beyond the west side of the dam or the left abutment. So essentially the river is rechannelized and is now significantly damaged a bridge upstream, caused the loss of a house and a business. And again, the channel keeps getting wider day by day. So I've got a update coming up here in not too many more days. So you'll want to be on the lookout for that. I want to send a shout out to the channel members. I really appreciate your ongoing support. I also want to thank those of you who have provided super thanks. That's another great way to support the channel. So I'll stay on top of this story with Lake Livingston Dam. There's a lot of uh, indications of a total lack of transparency here, just begrudgingly releasing information here by the Trinity River Authority for whatever reason. I mean, I contacted their designated people on Wednesday and got zip for, for information. So we'll stay on this story. And uh, thanks very much for watching.